Tour Guides. I'm Carrie. I'm Catherine. And I'm Bree. Today we are taking you on a tour of Salt Lake City. Um, I have never been to Utah, never been to Salt Lake City, so it's exciting. Yeah, I, have I haven't never been, been either, either, but, either, I but I've heard it's very beautiful. Who have been because they're Mormon, so. <laughs> I know a lot of Mormons, does that count? I, there's a lot of like great national parks there too. There are. I would like to see one day. Can you guys hear this clicking? Or is that just Yeah. Me? As long as it's not on the recording. It's on your head. <laughs> I think it's you. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. You know what else will give you a weird clicking in your head? Alcohol. I was going to transition. That was a really bad transition. The fact that we're I'm not sorry. recording not together really. tonight. <laughs> um, it wasn't our best. But we're off. We're off today. This is the first time... In the history of our podcast, we are not recording together. It's true, and it's so, it's weird, and it's it is weird. But also, I feel like very profesh, you know. Like I'm sitting at a desk and looking at <laughs> as I sit here and eat chocolate and drink wine with no pants on. I'm so professional. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I meant I literally. Yeah, well, I think my situation's a little bit different. <laughs> I am drinking rum with soda, but apparent I can't taste it, so I don't. It just tastes like cold, um, which is kind of dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But tell us about your cold one. I will tell no, you about my cold one, one that I had to crack open earlier. So, uh, <laughs> heyo. So I could not help myself when I saw that Epic Brewing Company had a big (laughs) Bad Baptist series Mm -hmm. because as someone who grew up Baptist Mm -hmm. and uh, Salt Lake is a hub for Mormons, I grew up in a very heavily Mormon populated area of North Texas, more toward the... We do have a lot of... Yeah. Uh, a large Mormon population where we're from. I have some friends that just don't live here. Please email us. I want to talk to you. I would introduce you. Yeah, you're right. All my Mormon friends yeah. are like parents yeah. and with multiple degrees and working jobs. So anyway, so we're drinking the Big Bad Baptist Imperial Stout. I also grabbed a rare release of the Big Bad Baptist Ooh, Double damn. Chocolate Double also, Peanut Butter Cup Baptist. as well. <laughs> Those are... Oh, yeah. Bad Baptist <laughs> Was right here. a bad Baptist as in I am no longer a Baptist. Yeah. Still I mean, bad. <laughs> yeah. I was a bad Catholic. <laughs> See, I like... And then we had a mutual disagreement. <laughs> I like the Methodist views, but the progressive Methodist views... I think views, all religion is a little culty for my taste. That's me. Anyway. <laughs> Too hive mind. Bruh, I mean, with all of the cults to be involved with... <laughs> look at those Trumpites. It's the fucking metronome on my computer. Anyway, we're not going um, So... <laughs> Sorry, I just realized. Because <laughs> you're using GarageBand. I automatically did I it. Forgot. And I was like, what yeah, the fuck is this ticking noise? Where is the mysterious ticking noise? It's a pipe bomb. It's a pipe bomb. Mysterious ticking noise. Yay. <laughs> oh, okay, so a quick abbreviated quote from their website. This is Epic Brewing Company again. Um, about their original Big Bad Baptist. For the second year in a row, our classic award-winning Big and Bold Original Big Bad Baptist will be available. We spend the off-season continuing to improve our most recognized beer, and we know you'll think the 2020 release is the best yet. Even better, Big Bad Baptist is going year-round, so you can enjoy your favorite barrel-aged stout during all four seasons. So, that being said, I'm going to enjoy my nice imperial stout all year long. Uh, Also, just a side note... Stout is probably my favorite beer, just because it it is a little bit more rich. We'll get to that in a second. Because I have another quote from their website about the rare release Big Bad Baptist Double Chocolate Double Peanut Butter Cup. Quote, these two variants were our most popular of the 2019 releases, but we at the brewery were house divided between Team Chocolate and Team Peanut Butter. Most conflicts are best settled with a compromise. So we combined and then doubled the amount of chocolate and peanut butter because too much is rarely enough. I could not agree more. 
I have actually not had it yet. I've only had the original. So I'm gonna I love how they went taste full taste house right Capulet, full Montague on that, like a house divided. That's not even, you or whatever the fuck you said, that's not, a house divided isn't right. Mm-hmm. But you know what the fuck I'm saying, damn it. I can't hear. Yeah. It, no, it said okay, we were so a house divided between Team Chocolate Montague and Team Peanut Butter. And Same side. Yeah, no, this tastes like a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. And they make these special brews in pint bottles, not just the regular 12 ounce. <laughs> I didn't know it came in pints. I'm getting one. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to be um, drinking a lot here because we are separated and I can't split it with Brie. And yeah. well, this. Carrie and I don't have to go to work tomorrow, at least. Holla. Don't talk. I'd have to work out in the morning, though, because. I work 13 plus I hours tomorrow. Fuck off. So, oh boy. You know. Ooh, my dog just head butted. I'm going to go get tested tomorrow if that counts for anything. That's what I'm doing. Yep. Anyway, I'm not just going to quote their website. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about Imperial Stouts. I do prefer Stouts because they have a rich, sweet, malty flavor and they pair well with foods that I like, mm. including aged cheeses. And mm. dense, rich chocolate cake. Think like a flourless chocolate cake. There's also a place near me that has like a super rich mac and cheese. And I used to go with a friend of mine and get one of my favorite stouts that I'll talk about here in a second. And their mac and cheese. And it just, oh, like chef's kiss. Ugh. So good. So, in general, Imperial Stouts are higher in bitterness and higher in alcohol. One of my favorites that I would get at this place is the Dragon's Milk Stout that clocks in at 11 ABV, the which is pretty high for a beer. And, oh yeah, it's delicious. But this is also what we expect mm. from our big bad Baptist tonight. So, if I remember correctly, the original... Is 11 ABV. It's somewhere here on here. So the yeah, that's pretty. So the bottle I'm drinking is 10.6 ABV, and the peanut butter. Sorry, it's not printed clearly on this. Is 11.5. Solid. So your girl's getting turned tonight. Hey yo. Yeah, I'm sad I can't share this experience with y'all because it's uh, it's delightful. At least we're all drinking. We are all drinking. Anyway, my, my Israeli passion wine. fruit rum there you go. <laughs> that, I that you can't taste. The yeah. one we had. Which one did you get? The red <laughs> blend. I got mm. two bottles of that bitch. And that I'm so finishing good. my second bottle right now. <laughs> hey <Hey-oh. laughs> Because I didn't well, do good. anything for the past week, so I've just been drinking well, a bottle of wine. We never let like, go great. There you go. No kidding. So I do still have a little... Yeah, our Christmas plans were ruined, and we're not going to linger. Yep. Um, I do have a little bit more on this. We're not together to tell. It's all good. I can hear you segueing. I know. Yeah. This is odd. I don't like it. Anyway, so stouts are not terribly carbonated, Mm -hmm. which is part of why I like it, because I get to that. As evidenced by that one episode. Mineral water. Me too, girl. Right, of me just burping. (laughs) Um... Yeah, so it's not terribly carbonated, so you will not hear me burping because of it. I might have to pee a lot more because I'm drinking a shit ton of it, but you know what? I'm not going to burp. Um, nice. Some flavors you can expect are cocoa and coffee. Those are the big ones, and I can't get enough of it. It's so good. But sometimes you can even get more floral or citrus aromas and flavors. I'm drinking these straight out of the bottle because I can. And no one's going to judge me. Yeah. Zach is in the other room playing a video game. You, and boo-boo. I'm in here recording. So I'm going to drink it straight out of the bottle. <sighs> I will. And so I'm not getting a whole lot of aroma. Not going to lie. Uh, but my brain really keys me on either. that coffee and chocolate. So that's usually all I get with these stouts. So mm. I'm also not a big beer connoisseur. As y'all know, I'm more of a wine person. And so it's going to take me a little bit more time to key in on these beer notes. But I do really like me a stout. So this is the Big Bad Baptist by Epic Brewing Company, and they are tasty. Nice. It would probably have gone very well with what I made for dinner, yep. uh, which is 
uh, Utah classic, and I actually learned about it from some of my Mormon students. Um, and then I looked it up. It's a side dish, not a full meal. And um, Colin said they were delicious. I could not taste them. But texturally, they had a lot going on. So funeral potatoes um, are, like, supposed to be the epitome of comfort food. And it's like a casserole that you take, uh, especially if someone is, you know, experiencing a, a loss. So you bring a casserole, right? I mean, if I'm going through they- a loss, I absolutely want potatoes. Yeah. So what it is is it's like cubes, potatoes, cream and chicken soup, and I got gluten-free cream and chicken soup, sour cream, salt, pepper, garlic, onions, cheddar cheese. You mix all that together, and then you put butter and crushed cornflakes on top, and you put that bitch in the oven. And when it comes out, it's like sour cream enchilada mm. sauce mixed with God mac damn. and cheese mixed with potatoes topped with buttery cornflakes. Totally that sounds like amazing. Fun. Yeah, and it's... Oh, yeah. Yeah, so so that's what I made. Um, texturally, as I said, <laughs> it got very crunchy. Like, the cornflakes, like, really did their job. Um, and they're naturally gluten-free, but so, like, a lot of time breadcrumb substitutes don't work that great for yeah. me. Because um, they're kind of mushy, so I will be pulling out the cornflakes. So... For other I things. I was actually talking with my mother-in-law over Christmas about, like, crushing up pork rinds, because those are naturally gluten-free... And yeah. putting it on chicken to make, you know, baked, quote unquote, fried chicken that way. Because it's a good keto and gluten free alternative yeah. for fried chicken. Yeah, if I wasn't so grossed out by pork rinds. Yeah. Meat, meat, you know, it's always touch and go. I actually bought ham to make with uh-huh. this, but it was just Colin and I, and we're not big meat eaters, so I did not make the ham. I put that in the freezer, and we just ate the potatoes. So. I mean, <laughs> potatoes, meat, you know, I'll eat it all. Yeah. So it was very good, and it does kind of have a special place in my heart because some of my students brought it up. They were like, Misty, you're sick. I'll bring you some funeral potatoes. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm not dead yet. And they're like, no, hear me out. <laughs> and then I was like, yes, I want those. So it was very sweet. Um, and they're from Salt Lake City. They just moved here recently, Aww. and it was something that they make. So it has a, a sweet place in my heart as far as casseroles. That's so nice. Because um, a sweet student offered to make it for me. Um, and it's potatoes. So uh, literally no faster way to my heart right. than through potatoes. Potatoes are literally the best. They're like, yes. Like, potatoes are perfect all around. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah. That's funeral potatoes um, for bereavement for, you know, especially at this time of the holidays where there's a lot going on. My family has been very sick. I'm not feeling too great, which is why we're not recording together, but we're staying safe oh, yeah. and eating carbohydrates. Well, and I just got back from alcohol. seeing my in-laws and I have been stuffed full of carbohydrates, including Delish. potatoes. And actually, when this airs, my friend Liz is coming to see us, and I'm going to make a nice egg casserole with potatoes in it, because I potatoes, love potatoes are literally the best. Also, I'm one pint down, and mm. nice. I'm feeling I real text good. Colin to bring me alcohol. I literally couldn't taste that, guys. I, it was just like, <laughs> just like, cold, like, I just drank a whole thing of mostly rum. Yep. Just drink it. Mm-hmm. Does it say it's mimosa, not mimosa? It does. And it's from my sister's wedding. I, I got it. little cups made. Maid of honor, Catherine. That's it's beautiful. It's mimosa, not mimosa. Oh, my cat's meowing at me. Uh, Crew Bear is very attached. She's very happy we're home. And the other girls started playing with her. Aww. And so now it's so cute that Kong and I just like stop and scream whenever they do anything. Uh-huh. And they're very overwhelmed, but I think they think it's cute. Maya missed us, and she has been nonstop, like, pawing at me. And I have scratch marks on my legs now because I haven't been able to trim her claws in a week. And she just wants love. But she hates love when I'm sitting down, so I have to stand up when she wants love. Yeah. Oh, boy, howdy. Well, She's needy. Okay, Salt yep. Lake. I'm... I'm yep in a mood but it's not your fault salt lake 
It is not your fault. It's not your fault. So, Sabri, why don't you and give if us I randomly some stop and on yell at my dog, I'm sorry. Please I'm do. just super anxious, and she's not fucking helping. So, <laughs> nothing is don't working tonight. Don't be anxious. Tonight, so so I'm right just, just leave the bottle. <laughs> So much, the so germs. much for my theory, Kill those Catherine, germs. about <laughs> cleansing my With, fire. Is that Western Sun? It is. Holla. I Western still don't sun. know if I'm sick. I just have a very <laughs> high fever, loss of taste and smell, headache, congestion, cough, stomach <laughs> issues. You can't tell me. I don't it's think fine. I'm. I call it. It's fine. Everything's fine. I'm just paranoid because literally everyone on Zach's family, <laughs> except of his parents. But everyone else has had COVID already, and we were seeing them, like, all Christmas. And I'm like, you know, I'm not, uh, my allergies get really bad. And well, so and the weather's been because I'm just really so paranoid. Tell if it's allergies, because, you know, and, like, the weather fucking with you or if you have COVID. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, of course, with where they're yeah. at, they, uh, they have cotton. Mm-hmm. And I'm hella allergic to the cotton plant so much so that twice a year when they would plant it Mm. and when they would harvest it i would get bronchitis Mm -hmm. just because i literally could not handle it and my body's like "Mm, nah and so when we were there like as soon as we got over the cap rock my chest started tightening and i was like oh no and then the entire time i was there i was like oh man is this covid or is it just my body attacking itself fucking because of fucking man. cotton. That's some bullshit. <laughs> we'll find out tomorrow. So far, I've tested negative <laughs> when they fuck. We'll find out tomorrow when fucking. I go get tested. Yep. Yeah, I was negative then too, and I've been away from everyone. But Test I, negative, think positive. Yeah, I don't know. So will I'm going to get it done yeah. one more time before I go anywhere near anyone else because I don't. I do not feel good, and my fever is skyrocketing. So. Well, didn't you say your family That's also had the flu? Damn time. Yeah, so my family <laughs> is Always. double dipping a little Ooh, bit right, right now. now. Always. So, um, also, I'm drinking yeah, a Reese's we didn't, peanut butter cup. We didn't, so <laughs> we didn't see them for Christmas or anything. So. Aww. We'll see. We'll see what will happen tomorrow at five forty-five. It was so sad when I, go get when I went. There was a little boy getting swabbed in front of me, Yet and again. he was screaming bloody murder. And they were like holding him down, and I was like, "Poor honey." It was so sad. Aww. Aww. The bad kids suck it up. Right. <laughs> he was like two, Catherine. Okay. Targeting a pap. <laughs> okay. That's what I had to tell Colin. He doesn't listen to this anyway. It's okay. <laughs> He'll never know you said that on air. No, he doesn't. No, I don't care. He wouldn't care. Are you kidding me? <sighs> oh, my cat's still meowing at me. Okay, I, I suppose her. I should. Nope, history. Give us okay. the lore. That. Yes, give okay, us history and so lore, Brie. It was originally inhabited by the Anasazi or the Pueblo people and later the Ute tribe, uh, the namesake Ooh, of the state. Spooky. So Ooh, this Blandos. area was actually we highly like populated by a number of Native American peoples, including the Navajo, the, ooh, I think it auto-corrected, Gashut, I have no fucking clue, the Shoshon, Shoshone, and the Paiute, prior to being, yeah, settled in late July of 1847. Shoshone. I know it when I hear it, but I've never, like, read it before, so I had to, like, wait, that's not what that is. <laughs> um so before they were settled uh, in late July of 1847 by members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, uh, pre-Salt Lake City, Salt Lake City had some other visitors aside from the Native Americans, and you've probably heard of them. In 1846, the Donner Party hiked through uh, Emigration Canyon across the valley, and this was actually the main way into Salt Lake for quite a while. So if you don't know about the Donner Party... You're not covering this, right? No, it's not serial killing. Right? You're not covering this. Okay. I know. We'll, we'll no, talk about that. No. I know. We'll talk it's about that. I just want to make sure because cannibalism go either way. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's, it was forced okay. cannibalism. It's I'm going to talk about it. Deal. I'm going to talk still. about it. Cannibalism nonetheless. <laughs> so, listeners, okay. if you don't know about the Donner Party... <laughs> 
A group of 87 people met up in Wyoming in October of 1846 for a trip to California through the Sierra Nevada mountains. A lot of these people were farmers and sadly didn't have that much experience with surviving in slash traveling through the wilderness. So two of the major families that were part of the group were the Reeds and the Donners, numbering seven adults and 16 kids, and George Donner was sort of the group's unspoken leader. So it was a really harsh winter. They only had a book to lead them through the pass, and it led them through a mountain pass just south of what is now Salt Lake City. They didn't have any really any real path to follow, so it took, took them 16 j. Good God, 16 days just to make it 36 miles, and they ended up having to leave their wagons of food behind at some point because they were too heavy and hard to maneuver and all that good shit. So they had nothing. They ended up having to camp for the winter near what is now known as Donner Lake because they got trapped in by snow. So needless to say, they started to starve, and 15 of the party's adults decided to set out in the hopes of reaching Sutter's Fort by San Francisco and getting help, but that was 100 miles away. So the horrible conditions killed off about half of the group of adults, while the other half of that group had to eat those who were killed by the harsh conditions or they too would have fallen. So, those seven members of that group who did survive were able to make it to a Native American village where news spread of their group, and a rescue party was then sent out to get the rest of the Donner Party that was stuck in the mountains. But unfortunately, by the time they were able to get there, almost half of the Donner Party was dead, including their unofficial leader, George Donner. So, 42 of the original 87 people ended up dying during that time. So... Wow. Well, they were also like told not to Because they literally didn't time, know what they, they were, were like, doing. Like they had no right. knowledge so, like, of survival in the wilderness. They were like farmers and shit. No. I, it, yeah. No. No, thank you. So I, that I'll was just an interesting little <laughs> thing because loads of people know about the Donner Party and that was nearby slash. <laughs> I can't even. I think I talked Oregon to someone trail, about that when so I was doing all no this. Way. I was like, do you remember? <laughs> <I> dysentery. <laughs> Oh my gosh, whenever my kids get really rambunctious, there's a website that has all vintage games, and I make them play it and see who can get the farthest, (laughs) Um, and it keeps them quiet for like 20 minutes, so teaching hack. Dang, 20 whole minutes? I'm impressed. I know. High schoolers for 20 minutes. (laughs) Always. Always. I just got dysentery. Always. That's how it is on the trail. by fucking (laughs) They got consumption. (laughs) They're like, bruh, my axle, bruh, my oxen. I'm like, I told you, man, it's rough out there in the real world. <laughs> I'm preparing you. I just really so hope really you guys can't see my crotch right now because I don't have pants on and I'm you sitting crisscross applesauce in front of my laptop. So, Brie, nope. half the time when you are here in the That's same true. room as me, I am not wearing pants okay. and I'm sitting cross-legged. So, like, I don't know why you're wearing I don't have a camera because... She says. Okay. I'm so suspicious. anyway, back to the settling. Like I said, the Mormons settled the area um, to the east of the Great Salt Lake on the northern end of the Salt Lake Valley in 1847. They originally named the Great, the joint Great Salt Lake City. What the fuck? I don't know what I wrote. There's joints, apparently. <laughs> they named it Great Salt yeah, Lake City, the but yeah, the Great was Jesus obviously Christ. later dropped in 1856, I, I think. Mm. So those settlers were pioneers, and they wanted to make their own autonomous religious community led by Brigham Young and a high council, which they would appoint, but they changed it later um, to an elected mayor and city council rather than the high council, appointed high council. So, to survive, the pioneers grew their own kind of, like, community gardens, which we've talked about, and it's us, um, and shared sources of water. So, yeah, we could learn some shit from that. (laughs) Yeah, we're going to have a little community where we grow our own food. and learn from that. Share, share, it's fair, motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. That, too. (laughs) Sharing is caring unless you have COVID. No, not in the time of plague. We don't share. Don't share COVID. Damn it. Quarantine. That's why Be no safe. potatoes for you. That's why we are currently recording separately because okay. we are being safe. Okay, so apparently you can actually see that mm. original like setup in the layout of the city blocks now. 
and the original pioneer settlers, they brought in their own culture and language and goods from all over Europe, <coughs> uh, but they wouldn't be the only ones in Salt Lake for long. With the California gold rush came a very diverse group of people, from miners to cowboys, ranch folk to explorers, and all of them wanted a piece of the action. Gold. Salt Lake was a major trading post for merchants and farmers alike at the time. So, ooh, what the fuck did I just do? Before 1850, the Utah Territory was the property of Mexico, but not for long. U.S. Congress took over the show and formally recognized the city as, quote-unquote, the city of Great Salt Lake. But, of course, we had to bring in some soldiers at some point. So, in 1857, when people started raising a stink over the Mormon practice of polygamy, President Buchanan sent in an army 2,500 strong to start an investigation into the LDS Church. To top it off, he also decided to put a governor in place who, as it just so happened, was an LDS. Well, Brigham Young was none too pleased with this, obviously, so he imposed martial law and so began the Utah War. However, Uh Brigham Young and his men eventually surrendered to the government and most of the soldiers in the area ended up leaving with the onset of the American Civil War, of course. So, alas, the soldiers didn't yeah. stay gone long, though, because the army came back to the area within just a few years, and they established a network of banks and businesses that weren't related to the LDS church at Fort Douglas, and they found silver and gold in the mountains. So, mm-hmm. yeah, they uh, followed... As the they do. ...party line, the government's <laughs> anti-LDS kind of deal. Yeah. Also, it's weird to think about yeah, Mexico being know. that far north. That was, I don't know. It's also weird. How convenient that... How I love how they love separation of church and state mm-hmm. then. Uh-huh. Now, now it's un-American. But, oh my <laughs> gosh. Well, it, Just throwing that out there. Okay, there's a lot of problems <laughs> with that, especially pick. with the people who are <laughs> Bible-beaten Trump supporters. Okay, he is the furthest yeah, thing. Yeah, well, just pick. From Bible beaten, unless he's beaten someone with a Bible. He can't even hold it right. Okay. (laughs) In 1869, the city saw another transformation as the first transcontinental... I can never say this any time we talk about it. Why? I know the word. Uh, Yep. Mm -hmm. The first transcontinental Railroad railroad was completed at Promontory Summit. And I'm bringing it back, baby. Hell on wheels. What, what? Okay. Anyway, with the opening of the Transcontinental Railroad in 1870, so to... What, Catherine? Big deal, big deal. It was, which is why there was a whole series on it. A big deal. With a daddy main character. (laughs) Um, so Salt Lake opened up to the world with the railroad, obviously, and people from all over came in droves looking for work, especially mining. So, yep, gold rush and all that good shit. Um, so there's loads of, like, political, religious whatnot going back and forth between the government and the LDS church during this time, like I mentioned. And it's important, don't get me wrong, but I already have a shit ton of information as it stands, and I think you... I, I thought you had mentioned at one point, Carrie, coming back to this. I don't know. Maybe not. But if so, then we I could cover it more in that episode. If not, it's fine. It's tense. The government. Between the yeah. Mormons and... No, I just meant coming back to Salt Lake City in general. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. Then I can hey, cover yo. it then. We're going to do this again. We got a lot of shit <laughs> no, for this. There's no shortage of depravity on my end. Potatoes. We're just going to eat more potatoes, but who cares? Oh, yeah. I have like three more stories in addition to the two I have today. Granted, the two I, I have today are gold. serial killers. Not as many recipes, but I'll just there make the same potatoes. I know, I you guys didn't even get them. to try them. Throw them salt. I want to try them. I love potatoes. And like <laughs> I said, there's a serial killer. We could do this 18 times and I'd still have some... <laughs> Six sons of bitches to cover. Don't worry about me. Beautiful. Granted, mm-hmm. yeah, that's really I mm, uh, murder. Seattle and Salt Lake, my big hitters in the yeah. U.S. There's there's uh, interesting things yeah. to be said about that and found. Anyway, whoop whoop. I'm going to Seattle. Bree and I go I to Seattle. I can talk about months. the text now, Catherine, because Daisy us. knows. So, 
The text we talked about mm-hmm. last time, Carrie, that you yes, thought was Daisy a fun text, now. that it wasn't a winky face fun text. <laughs> um, Catherine had sent me a text. I think it was that day. Oh. And she's like, when we go to <laughs> Seattle, um, are we wearing colored contacts or are we adults? And I said, have we ever been adults? <laughs> <gasps> Uh, no, we're doing a Twilight themed um, photo shoot when we're in Forks, no, and I, oh, I am ready. Poor. I'm going anyway. Um, <laughs> if you want to sponsor us, we can set up a Patreon just <laughs> for you. But I'm too poor to go to Washington because we bought a house and we have to buy furniture for said house because we need patio furniture specifically, and right now that's not what's available on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Facebook <Sponsors>. market <laughs> Sponsors. <laughs> Facebook sponsors us, right? Um, Overstock.com. They got just what sponsors. I need. <laughs> Sponsor us. Bro, you're just what okay, I need. Okay, but like Wayfair. most of my furniture is Wayfair. from Wayfair, though. You're just what I need. <laughs> I can record that for you. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. we moved so. into the new house. That's pretty much what we bought too it's convenient we're bougie we go to so convenient furniture places okay (laughs) we're too bougie for that sorry (laughs) okay so we're just now leaving the 1800s just fair warning that's why um so i'm gonna sum up that little bit the church agreed to ban polygamy in order to be granted statehood and utah got its first female state senator martha hughes cannon who won by defeating her own husband like a boss ass bitch yeah not only that, but with her help, the woman of Utah what, got the right to <laughs> So, on to the 20th century. hey Did I skip the 19th? Oh, no. Yes, I said 1800s, not 18th century. I was like, hold up there. No. Okay. There was an 18th somewhere. Yes. Okay. Nah. Martha got her come up. she won against her husband? Yeah. Get it, girl. Yep. Okay. It is wonderful. Hey-o. I liked it quite a bit. It's pretty funny, um, actually. <laughs> that's some parks and Rec so in the 20th shit. century you could say salt lake glue that some parks in and the Rec 1900s <laughs> so like yeah it's the 1900s so like a lot of places did because like inventions and progress and shit but whatever i wanted to say glue up in reference to a city and so i did so it glue up glowed up is that people say glue up for you? glow people say glue Oh, you glue yeah. up. Yes. Yes, I think it's, it's technically glow in the vernacular but, when referring to this. Yes. Or they have but a glow up. But if you're speaking in the vernacular in past tense, when you're saying glow up, it's glue up. Interesting. So, so <laughs> she glue said, up. damn. Yeah. Because if I think right. someone glue up, it makes me think that they got on glue would, and Jerry. just saying. What would they do on they just, like sass Here comes glue, or they, like, Carrie's inner Karen. Glue? Yeah. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> oh God. Okay, anyway. So they got some sewer systems going, actual streets, a streetcar line, city parks, and even street just lights. Saying. Not to mention the state capitol building. So, yeah, they glue up. And it all okay. started well, with nice my tie in. story today. That's cool. I'm getting there. Nudge, nudge. Yeah. You have to. I'm. Okay. I'm working on it. Just saying. Okay. Um. So as was always the case, shit went sideways though. So to be fair, it was the Great Depression, so it was like sideways everywhere. But during that time, the annual per capita income was less than three hundred dollars, and unemployment was above thirty five percent. And not only that, but the mining industry Oof. was petering out. So. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah. So was... we're approaching that? <laughs> okay, that's a, a it's an overstatement, but Factory. still. It's yeah. So they tried to replace the mining Oof. industry with ski industry, but it was still a pretty new thing that they were trying out and yeah. The economy didn't like Ooh, fully recover until nice, so after World War 2, obviously. And with the war, once again came a greater military yeah. presence in the area and that included defense industries that needed the raw materials from the mines as well as the personnel and officials at hill air force base so in the 60s salt lake kept on growing and they started building more business centers and commercial areas out in the suburbs but the lds church wanted people to stay a little closer so they invested in a shopping mall downtown as a countermeasure 
And tourism grew along with the area and the economy with it until they eventually uh-huh. put in an airport, developed actual city blocks, added some parks and a convention center, and restored some public buildings to their former glory to continue to draw people in. And in 2002, the Winter Olymp- Olympic Games were held in Salt Lake City. Well, it was yeah, cool, too, because that was a big, with that, they that also was brought, a big ba- brought back the light rail that was shut down in 1941. And I think it's called Tracks. I don't know. But parts of it still oh. run in the same place as the first streetcar, which is cool. Yeah. Um, nice. To wrap up the history section for now, though, we have booze. What? <laughs> what? I'm confused by my nose. I like booze. <laughs> it's like, wrap up, booze. <laughs> <laughs> uh i don't know back in the day the og mormon pioneers oh i know we're known for yeah to wrap it up we have booze okay so back in the day the og mormon pioneers were known for distilling valley tan yeah. and mark twain was said to have remarked that it was so strong quote it was made of fire and brimstone end quote so you can try some for yourself at high west distillery or trim a polygamy porter no, try a polygamy porter um, made by Wasatch Brewery. I don't know if that's how you say it. And you can also try a gin that was named after a child of one Brigham Young himself. Her name was Madame Petrini, and it's distilled by Ogden's own. So, yes, we are wrapping up history on booze. Huh. All right. Like we do like booze. The Loa. <laughs> Lillian Gray. So, at Salt Lake City Cemetery, there's a grace, gravestone mm-hmm. that reads, Lily E. Gray, June 6, 1881 to November 14, 1958. And it also has a phrase on it that says, quote, Victim of the Beast, 666, end quote. <laughs> so, there's a legend. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like a big mystery, I guess. Um, so passe. There's like no <laughs> substantial history to back anything that they know. Um, no ghosts, nothing. <laughs> oh, that's but, what makes a good story. But the only clue they nothing have, she died of natural causes. <laughs> um, and it said, her death certificate Sorry, said she died microphone. of pulmonary embolus, renal insufficiency, and nephrotic syndrome. Um, she was from Canada. Her husband outlived her. His name was Elmer That's L. Gray. Some speculated that he was the one who put that on her gravestone to protest against the government. Um, I guess he was paranoid and very he anti-government, and so that's why they think that. And he allegedly blamed police and kidnappers for killing her. Uh, yeah, a lot. Um, he did it. I think she was just like, bro, you know, it'd be so funny. I was about to say, that's some shit we would do. (laughs) Because that's something I would do. Yeah. (laughs) She was just the original true crime. Well, I was listening to, and that's why we drink. And they're talking about someone who had, I'm watching and waiting on their tombstone. I was like, damn, that'd be something I would do. I'm watching and waiting. Carve it into my death tree. I'm with it, man. (laughs) Yeah. But mm-hmm. yeah, they there are like That's crazy me, ass yeah. tales of Hilarious. speculation. Like she was a sacrifice to Satan, and she was a Satanist, or some shit like that. Um, that she was accused of witchcraft. They said <laughs> she's like not. Nah, well, they also proposed that she may have died on Highway Six Six Six, which is one of the country's like most famous dangerous freeways, which we will talk about in a little bit. And terms of lore wasn't that an episode of supernatural Spooky. yeah i thought so crossroads demons hey it's the second episode got a second day. i think it's the second episode i mean they pop up all the time so it's the lady in it's the weeping lady in white episode is on that same I highway remember. i think yeah i mean the lady in white was the first episode so long. wasn't it <laughs> Could have been. Judge so. yeah, on no. one trip. Spot fucking on, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We need to go to their brewery. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. In Austin? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can record from there. Even though I already have drinks lined up. I'm going to talk about more drinks in Texas from <laughs> my uh, episode notes. We- two episodes from now. Oh. Oh. 
I don't know anything. San Antonio? Yep. All right. So, does Bigfoot bear the mark of Cain? Some Mormon folklore says that Bigfoot is Cain. Yes. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> so season six supernatural so there's a big debate over what I the know, mark of Cain I've was I've seen this episode and people a lot of times get racist with it um but yeah if you guys yeah yeah so if you guys Ooh, don't know yikes. for those of you who no, don't listeners you. uh the mark of Cain Cain killed his brother Abel and spilled his blood on earth blah 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 and was doomed to roam the earth Oh, I have a fun story that'll lighten the mood a little bit. In our version of Children of Eden, in which the mark of Cain was Schmier. some stage makeup smeared across There are so your many things that just happened. Style. First of all, smeared uh, no, like it's a fucking smear on Big In our version, he was supposed to beat his brother Abel to death with this very appropriately placed stage combat rock. Right? But he couldn't find the rock one night. And he was carrying like this fruit basket. And so he grabbed a coconut. Nice improvisation. And he beat him to death with the coconut. (laughs) Oh, it was so funny. A 14 year old me was like, this is funny, but at least he did something. (laughs) He could have just panicked, but he was like, I'm going to kill you with this coconut. (laughs) And he, he sure did. Beat his brother to death with the coconut on stage. Oh the theater. Nothing like it. <laughs> so that's nice. my anecdote about Cain and well, Abel. And according to this, there was a LDS apostle, mm-hmm. David W. Patton. Um, I don't know. This is apostle just what it should says. not have last names. This is just what it says. It makes so it apparently less, he met a strange man on a trail. And, quote, his skin was very dark, end quote. Um, yeah, he did not say. Did like not, dark, like purple? Did not say. Like, ooh, so he's clearly. So, I guess mm-hmm. the Other apostle asked purple. the man where he lived, and the man said he had no home, and he was a wanderer of the earth, blah, blah, blah. He's a fucking nomad, okay? Um, he was apparently very... A very miserable creature, and he tried to die multiple times while on this earth, but he couldn't die, and his mission was Aww. to destroy the souls of men. That's so sad. Yeah. Oh. No. Aww. So apparently there Not have been, been like 130 Bigfoot sightings man. in that area, the Wasatch or whatever. So that's the stretch there. That's the lore behind the- Bigfoot being Kane, apparently. Yep. <laughs> so there's the legend of John Baptist. Woof. Um, it doesn't look French because I was gonna say it in the French way, but it just. I mean, there is an end. Maybe at the he's end of, the big bad Baptist. E at the end of Baptist, so Baptiste would be fair, but John doesn't look like the normal Jean. But sure, we'll go with it. He was caught robbing graves. Um, and people accused him of being a necrophiliac. Oh. So. Oh. Well, we know there are ten levels of necrophilia. Ew. <laughs> yes. Right? First Ew. episode. Whoop, whoop. Thank you, Wine and Crime. I don't have time for all ten it of is. them. It is. Yep. <laughs> it is the first episode, isn't yep. it? For creepy Aww, Russian people. Aw, nostalgia. <laughs> okay. Um. So apparently he still like haunts Amanda, the, the shores of Great Salt Lake. He was a grave during the 1800s, though. He was mm. one of the first in Salt Lake City. And he was, like, employed as such. And three years in, um, I guess a dude asked him to exhume his brother or something so that he could rebury him in their family plot. And they dug up the plot, but... The body was naked and was in okay, the casket, that's thrown, or thrown in the casket face down. So the dude was pissed, <laughs> and they started an mm-hmm. investigation focused on yeah. John Baptiste. And they secretly placed the cemetery under surveillance, which is when he was caught with a corpse in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> so he was arrested. They searched his house. They found items from corpses, like their clothing. 
which he apparently made into drapes. Well, a lot of people who like that mm-hmm. find jobs that gives them but he access. Like, like, that's like a new thing. Made that, the like, dead people people's clothes into drapes and furniture bodies, covers. That. <laughs> it's gross. And he that had a vat set up in his and basement for boiling clothes before he used them for such purposes. Oh. It's Oh, okay, yeah, it's, it's not creepier. as gross it's then, if I'm going to be honest. That creepy. bothers me less. Well, yeah, yeah. Although, yeah, I don't think have, like, really dead ever people smell all over his just furniture. Smells wrong, and I don't see how that ever comes out. Ever. Yeah. Our, yeah, yeah, our people brains don't like the smell of dead nope people. The fuck it's out. like in our biology. <laughs> okay, so apparently Jean-Baptiste robbed Please. over 350 corpses. He kept their clothes but sold their jewelry. Um, he was convicted and exiled to an island on Salt Lake. But apparently he vanished, and he was never seen alive again. And his spirit allegedly haunts Great Salt Lake. Um, How many they islands see are on Salt Lake? Holding a bundle of soggy, rotting clothes. Yeah. Like, of oh. all the things. Ew. But, but for know. real, how many islands are on Salt Lake? do the history Salt section, Lake. Carrie. I don't know. Might Google it. <laughs> okay, so the Devil's Highway... So it was originally named Route 666 and nicknamed the Devil's Highway, obviously. So it goes through what is referred to as the four corners of the United States. So it's the space that meets between Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah. And there's supposed to be, like, paranormal activity in that area, obviously, because it's named fucking Highway 666. And it's like a four-corner meeting space. Like, what do you expect? Crossroads Holla. Demons, the goddess Hecate, which technically I think her face only yeah. faced like three directions, but still. What did you expect? That was just poor planning. Yeah. Also, just as a side note, there are 17 officially named islands. There's too much. In Great Salt Lake. There are 17. So there are 17. Just so mm-hmm. everyone knows. That's a big lake. This is why I shouldn't be allowed to have Google while we're recording. Because I'll Google shit. No, that's, <laughs> that's good. That's when we learn things. I'm the only sober one here. No, Catherine just I'm has almost a fever. Uh, Catherine okay. is zoning a little bit. So. No, it's not you. It's the internal Jesus. Okay. The internal flame. So apparently people have reported <laughs> hell ha- hellhounds chasing alongside their cars. <laughs> Um, and slashing their tires. Oh, puppies. Not puppies. Dirty fucking dirty hell hell hounds, hounds, Catherine. <gasps> Apparently. No, wait, wait, I they had a dream that tires. I was raising a hellhound, and he was so cute, and he was, like, destroying my shit. <laughs> Someone slashed like, the, my oh tires my gosh, in high school. So Maybe it was just a hellhound, mom and dad. People didn't hate me. It was just a hellhound. Oh <laughs> okay, apparently there were also... <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Be nice to be in high school, or you'll get brought up on a podcast years later. Time is a human on the devil's highway. (laughs) So apparently, people saw skinwalkers. No skinwalkers when they were shifting from between their animal and manly forms, and an evil shaman who would just like show up in their backseat to steal their fucking souls. Again, how rude of them to spy on me. Do not pop up in people's no. back seats. That is how you Polar cause accidents. Okay. That's the point. That's called a good blowjob, honey. Hey, oh. I missed something. Bri, I don't know we if I want can hear their souls. That came out of left field. Winky face. Yeah. Winky okay. face. Never mind. I don't get it. <laughs> Apparently, there's also a ghostly hitchhiker. I'm oh, okay. So, a woman. Hey. Supernatural, supernatural uh, woman in a white like nightgown sleep. walks or the road alone. Someone, yep, someone tries to give her a ride. She disappears. Episode number one. And um, apparently there's a crazy Le ass um, It's a ghost who drove a semi truck, apparently, but it's just the truck, I think. Um, Died. <laughs> that's another supernatural just, episode. Like, that scares the Very sh- Christine. Yes. Christine. Isn't that her name? Mm-hmm. The Stephen King book where the car is It is. Is it's a little red, like, but vet it's a little car. It's, I don't know. Topless. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Winky face. My, my sister just got, just did a bad blog. And she just sent us a picture of the prize. That 
was in her bath bomb. Are you guys ready? <laughs> it's a fucking plastic bug. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a plastic lobster bug looking scorpion motherfucker. <laughs> she said this was the prize in my bath bomb. <laughs> That's a bird. I, 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 I felt it in the tub. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that's great oh my god that's, who would put a plastic who would put a, put a plastic scorpion in, in your bath bomb that's so funny sorry I figured you guys would appreciate that I don't think I've ever had anything hidden inside of a bath bomb I've just had like you know rose petals on the top that have you know opened up Whenever I have my bath, but I've never had like something inside a bath bomb. (laughs) Hey, listeners, send me bath bombs. Just saying. (laughs) Nice. I almost bought for the white elephant exchange. Should have. I fought someone for that. Damn, girl. Why didn't you? I didn't. But. Oh. Um, oh, it got really bad you. reviews. No. It was like, Ooh. this smells terrible. No. And I was like, oh, we don't mess with that fake gray smell. Also, so, I'm really mad about both my bathtubs here. I was mad about both my bathtubs in the apartment because my apartment did not have good, like, water heater anything. It could not heat a bathtub. And then here I have a jacuzzi <laughs> tub, and I'm like, ew. And then the other tub is not good for lounging, so I need a good bathtub for lounging. Catherine, I'm just going to come over to your house and lounge in your bathtub. You do have a nice bathtub. I have like a garden you have a really tub good or whatever bathtub. those fuckers are called. It still has the yeah, pink stain. Yeah, yours is nice. I have dyed your hair in that <laughs> bathtub before, Brie. See, and I had a garden tub, but a shitty heat. water heater. So oh, it yeah. Didn't heat all the Mine lines. didn't it was used to do that. It, is, it has been it recently. I'm going to call maintenance and be like, yo, turn this shit up. I want to like burn my face it's soft hot, okay? Yeah. Yeah. How else do you know you're clean if it doesn't hurt? Exactly. I need my bath water (laughs) hot as hell. I'm preparing for my stent in hell, okay? If I don't steam when I get out, not hot enough. Yeah. How how do I know I'm clean if I'm not literally burned down to my cellular layer of skin? Yeah. Has it been um, an hour and we're still I'm just done finishing except for this segment. last thing? It's, okay, it's, called, short. it's Ken Walker Ranch and it's like two to three hours away, but you'd like this because um, people say that they see skinwalkers there all the time and um, UFO related phenomena. Do, 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 do. <gasps> phenomena. Yeah, I love UFOs. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Thanks Mena, do, 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 do. Um, these plus size models in this bridal fashion show are giving me absolute life. My queens, my cat guys, is people are just life. using plus size models now, not even as like a gimmick, like they're just in the regular shows. <laughs> I know you're drunk, don't bitch. listen to that. I'm drunk, <laughs> we know. <laughs> Um, I am a pint and a half in on beer, and I'm feeling good. (laughs) Someone told me I could be a plus Um, plus size model recently, but I'm too short. I'm probably too plus size. (laughs) Shut the fuck up. But, like, these are cool, and I love wedding dresses. do it. Love them. (laughs) Yeah, be a model. Oh, no. No, thank you. But I do like looking at wedding dresses. Sorry, I'm just like mouth breathing into the fucking microphone. <laughs> it's my allergies. <laughs> That's okay. Did no, because I'm going like, to have to edit it out. Whispering into it with my horrible like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lord, you're going to have to edit out all of this. <laughs> I just said I was done. It's your turn, dipshit. Okay, I said that when you were going do 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 before. It's no. your turn, Kay. Oh, I thought you said you had something else to do. Okay, I'm sorry. You continue. I'm going to give my dog her shot before she dies. <laughs> okay. All right. So for hauntings, my first story tonight is rather short, but I had to include it because it involves my favorite color and a ghost that is particularly active. So this is the story of the ghost of the Rio Grande Depot known as the Purple Lady. 
Ooh. Yes. So shortly after the train depot was completed in the early 20th century, one source said 1910, the purple lady and her fiance were standing on the train platform when they got into a heated argument, the result of which was her engagement ring being thrown down onto the tracks. After realizing what had transpired, she threw herself down onto the tracks to retrieve the ring when she was hit by an oncoming train and obviously died. She is seen yeah. by employees and travelers alike around the depot wearing a purple dress and a large purple hat and is frequently seen in the ladies' restroom on the upper floor and in the cafe. Some, Me too. Is it right? <laughs> I will also be found in the cafe. Yeah. And they said she was just like there, you know, hanging out. Some have heard singing or crying. Also me. Yep, always. Coming from the restroom along with the phantom shuffling of footsteps. There is another ghost who is believed to inhabit the Rio Grande Depot, but he's less known. It's believed that he was a worker who died during construction and now haunts the basement. He's a cro- oh, it's like at my school. Right. We have a ghost who was electrocuted when he was building it. Yeah. So we don't really know a whole lot about this guy, but he's accredited with locking doors and turning out lights in the basement. Aw. Yeah. So that's all he's I have. getting it ready. Yeah. So that's the Rio Grande Depot. So typically you can just see the lady in purple and all of her little shenanigans, whether it's on the tracks or mm. in the restroom, in the little cafe, you know, hanging out. My second story is the McCoon Mansion, spelled M-C-C-U-N-E. So if it's not McCoon, I don't know mm-hmm. what it is. Anyway, so keeping with the theme of time, the McCoon Mansion dates back to the early 1900s. According to the historical marker, quote, the mansion, completed in 1901, was designed for Alfred W. and Elizabeth McCoon by architect S.C. Dallas. Alfred McCoon acquired great wealth through railroad, mining, and timber imp- enterprises. Sorry, my mouth is really dry because of beer. Mm. Yep. Enterprises. There we go. In 1920, after the McCoons moved to Los Angeles, they gave the building to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It then housed the McCoon School of Music until 1958, Mm. when it was used as an extension school for Brigham Young University. The mansion was purchased by McCoon Associates in 1973. I will say there is history past that, uh, but we'll get there. Just had to get the preliminary facts out of the way before we get to the juicy details that come into play. Also, as a side note, every music school is haunted. As someone who went yep. to a music school, we had several ghosts. So the fact that the McCoon Mansion was haunted and how's the Brigham Young University School of Music is just further proof of that. So, some backstory on the McCoons. Alfred McCoon was the father he was born in india on a british military base and was taught by missionaries of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints the natural move for the family from there was utah so when alfred was still a child the family moved to nephi n-e-p-h-i i'm assuming that's nephi sure utah uh the article i was reading said alfred was a shepherd growing up i'm assuming that means sheep but it was the later part of the 1900s, so... Well, maybe, yeah, but maybe he was, like, a rancher more so than a shepherd. Like, maybe he was a sheep rancher. Well, I was thinking more of, like, biblical shepherd. Oh, maybe. Because I this was know. more probably into his later teens. Oh, yeah. So, so I don't know if he was, maybe, like, a shepherd a of, like, sheep or a shepherd of, like, men, biblically maybe. speaking. So anyway, I'm going to assume sheep because I'm going to assume the historical articles are going to be more direct rather than biblical. 
He grew up and he became invested in the railroad and eventually owned a third of the trolley cars that ran through the Salt Lake City. I've been working on the Hang railroad. On. I need to burp All because... the live long day. Okay, I covered your burp. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, as someone with much clout, it's natural that he would get involved in none other than politics. And if and anyone could hear that, my husband sneezed as soon as allergic. I said politics. He is clearly he allergic sneezes. to politics. Anyway, he ran to be governor in 1898 and governor. in 1916. <laughs> so I can assume that he was a bit embarrassed by the second loss, and so they moved to L.A. Oof. Not where you should go if you're embarrassed. Oh, yeah. They'll beat you down real quick in the city of angels. Oh, yeah. Um, so none of the articles really talked about his family, but I do know that his wife died in Utah in 1924, and Alfred died while Alfred. in vacation in France in 1927. Al- oh That's yeah, nice. sorry. I actually kind of like the name Alfred. You were giving the like, shot to me. Like, I feel like no, I liked name. Alfred. It's a pretty good name. Cause... Oh yeah, so Alfred McCoon. Alfred. Yeah, I couldn't think of a good Batman quote. Yeah, off the top of my head, I was struggling. So... That's why I just said Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be taking the Batmobile out this evening? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That, that was dumb. Continue. I'm three <laughs> cups of rum and I still can't taste it. Where's the rum <laughs> gone? But That's okay. I'm my almost eyes, two pints of beer in. I know. And we're my good. eyes are all glossy. I just, I don't know, man. I'm debating on whether I should eat some ice too, cream. I'm not going to lie. And I'm Always not ice cream. Or potentially COVID. But I have mm. ice cream, but I don't think I can taste it. So, like, should I eat it? Like, it's just going to be empty calories, but, like... My brain will still get pleasure from the fact that I'm eating ice cream, right? Right. I don't know. Your brain will yes, still get pleasure. feels the pleasure. Oh, this is a difficult decision. I could eat vegetables. Who knows? Well, in any way, on for what you came for. The mansion is located near Capitol Hill and towers over the nearby houses because Mr. McCoon wanted to very clearly show off his wealth, yeah. as one does. The house is a large red sandstone bungalow style structure that cost one million dollars in nineteen oh one, which is about thirty million dollars today. Yeah. Can you imagine spending thirty million dollars to build a house? Colin, I keep saying if my book makes it big, what we're gonna spend money on. I don't know why. We've just decided talking like this. Uh but Sure, when my book becomes a bestseller, I'll spend $30,000 in my house and you guys can come see but it. But $30 I was gonna say, million. You spent more than $30,000 oh, yeah, 30 in your house. Oh, yeah, yeah. 30000 is... Right. That is true. I did do that. And also yes, took more than two economy. years to build. So $30 million dollars in two years to build. It's gotta be nice. Like it... Yeah, needless to say, he spent a shit ton and spared no expenses. Uh, the house had 21 rooms, including separate sleeping quarters for Alfred and his wife, Elizabeth, across three floors. This contained an iconic German mirror. So according to Sean Fletcher, who was the property manager for the McCoon mansion and gave a quote in 2019. This mirror was believed to be the largest mirror west of the Mississippi in the United States when it arrived by specially designed box car delivery in 1900. Who cares about a mirror? It's a weird Ghost thing to have. Teeth. You'll want to know it here pretty soon. Just saying. Always. Is it it's haunted? Oh, So, Alfred did not spare any expense. He had tiles imported from the Netherlands. The red roof was handcrafted from Holland. And they featured onyx and Nubian marble. We bougie. (laughs) Yes. That's the blackest of black. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm a fan. Yes, it's stunning. Painted (laughs) onyx. It's how bougie people are emo. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Oh my God. My little emo heart was beating so fast. Oh, yes. Especially because the mansion included running water, a conical turret, an oval 
portico complete with wrought iron ornaments. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. I care less about that than I do the running water. Oh, That's for yeah. sure the way I'll, I would want to go. Oh, yeah. I 1901 and running water. I a different time yes, except for the whole non-running water sanitary conditions thing. If I was born at a different time, I would be dead. <laughs> Absolutely. I've been reading I just Outlander. want the fashion of Sometimes a different time. Sometimes I would time. like yeah. That's parts it. of the yeah. knowledge and intelligence. You know, and I've been not the idiocy that came with like racism and shit. But like, you know, some of those things oh, like yeah. how some writers used to write and the things they used to know and I'm like, God, you were smart. We're stupid now. I need to be learned learned like you. Oh yeah. Well and mm-hmm. I've been reading Outlander and I was like what would I have done differently if I would be Which transported be back within the first five two hundred plus years? I would have just died. Yeah, yep, I'd be dead. That's what would have happened. I would have been like, "Oh look, look at that nice garment." I wish it didn't smell like bo and sweat and blood and piss. Right, and then I would die from like scarlet fever right. almost immediately. And like I. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, anyway. I know it. So, <laughs> the, <laughs> the people who did live during right. that period. Who didn't die, those champions. Right. So, um, there was a grand ballroom on the third floor that included <gasps> balconies and alcoves. And Wait, why would you put a ballroom on the third floor? Everyone has to walk also up Also because you're supposed to, to, to the descend to the ballroom design, so you can look right. fabulous like Scarlett O'Hare. Uh, Don't fret. There was a grand staircase. Yes. Where you could descend. But it should be leading Bam. down Bats. into the ballroom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dropped the ball. <laughs> Except you did descend down into the ballroom because there was an alcove where the musicians were hidden under. So that way it would be hidden where the music was coming from. So you would descend over where the musicians were sitting i still think third floor is an inappropriate spot for a ballroom so my ballroom will be on the first floor elegantly <laughs> we'll be in the basement like so you just descend down into it <laughs> wait i need i need julie andrews to i need her to narrate this shit for me i like shall she did descend Kay. into the ballroom fucking queen oh i want queen julie andrews yes yes Ugh. Anyway, so, yes, there was an alcove for the musicians hidden under the grand staircase for the ballroom on the third floor. I didn't feel the need to say it, but I will anyway. Alfred and Elizabeth felt the need to throw lavish mm-hmm. parties. Brought me to. Right? I, like, I want to throw lavish parties, but I live on a single story. Like, my most lab. <laughs> The best party I will ever throw is the fact that I threw a <laughs> surprise party for my husband's right. 30th birthday. And Catherine got drunk and ruined the surprise okay. as we're in the garage. Like, that was the best that it's going he to be. He said he was still surprised. And I am proud of that. Mm-hmm. And it was great. He was! That's the thing. Like, he was still surprised. Mm-hmm. I am proud of that party. We had fun. Mm-hmm. Like, I think every single person there actually had fun. Therefore, it was a success. It was probably the best success at a party that I have ever had. And I am so glad that it was for my husband's 30th birthday party. Of course, these people were far past their 30s and they were throwing their parties. So, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the McCoons moved after the 1920s. And once they moved, people started seeing ghosts. And more on that later because it's too early in my segment to start talking about ghosts. So as we heard from the... Is it too early? Because we've been here an hour and 20 minutes. And I feel like it's the perfect time to start talking about ghosts. It hasn't been my segment. Like, I still got part of my segment yet. Give me a second. (laughs) Isn't your segment about ghosts? Yeah, but give me a second. (laughs) Um, so skipping <laughs> to what we already learned from the historical marker, it was a music school for BYU and a school of dance, and then it was sold to the McCune Associates in 1973, but it was also allegedly sold to the dance studio in 1973. It wasn't really clear. And then in 1974, it was made into a historical site. 
Um, and then according to the site in 1999, there was a terrible tornado that swept through Salt Lake City yeah. and the McCarthy. So Paul McCarthy and his family began restorations on the mansion and not just the exterior from the damage of the tornado, but also the interior that had been allegedly dilapidated in previous years, but was Some also a dance studio. I don't know. It was weird. <laughs> hey yo. Yes, you did. Red is sus. Red is sus. Um, but Sean Fletcher, um, he was, is, I don't know when he became the like manager of the property, but he had bought a piece of stained glass that was original to the property uh, from an auction in Los Angeles that cost $14,000. And he had to figure out how to get it back to Salt Lake City because it was originally from the house. And it just proves that the uh, home improvement projects never stop. I can attest to that as my house is from 2002 and we are still working on home improvement projects. So today the McCoon mansion is known for its events like weddings, anniversaries and celebrations, as well as board meetings and business retreats. I've seen pictures and oh my gosh, they're stunning. Uh, what wedding, but also, bitch? Have your wedding there. Oh, man, right. I should have my wedding there. Damn. Well, Colin and I are already planning our third wedding, and so I need to plan someone else's wedding. Yeah, Bree, we're just going to plan are... yours to yourself right now. Or, you know, there's a special someone who Zach and I know would fit perfectly in with your lifestyle. I really like... I'm not going to pressure you into... Your job is to find the groom. My job is to plan the wedding. Right. Diana. We will plan I'm for not you. overstepping. I'm just planning. We're not going well, we to pressure you into anybody. First, There's just Harry, someone who's great that I'm going to nudge. Do you think I haven't been trying? <sighs> Who have I been trying to, like, hang out with with you for a while now? It. Anyway, so... <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, so there are ghosts, obviously, since I'm covering it. There are two prominent ghosts that, who dwell in the mansion. The first is a man in a black cape like who is seen in the ballroom. He's not malicious. In fact, I think he's just a Christmas lover who wants to come out and celebrate I, because I he's you meant, like, only seen during the holiday a season. Lover? Oh, no. No, 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 no. He's not just a Christmas person. Someone who loves Christmas. I'm so sorry. This is my cast. I love you, honey. So some believe that this is the spirit of Mr. Alfred McCoon. He is credited with turning on the lights in the ballroom, even though his family he just wants to keep turning them off. So the McCarthy's. <laughs> No, that's just what your husband does. Right. You turn off a light and they walk into the room and turn it on and then don't fucking turn it off for no goddamn reason. Right. He's just being a man. Right. So Paul McCarthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Paul McCarthy, the McCarthy's family um, that bought it back in the 70s, they still own it. Um, And so they keep turning them back off because electric (laughs) bills are a thing. And Um, they rough. Yeah. Oh, Yeah. And this persisted until Paul McCarthy ended up calling an electrician the day after Christmas and revealed that there was a light switch to the ballroom two floors below, so that's on the base level, that no one knew about. And so the only person they could assume that knew about this switch was He's like, I'm just gonna Alfred fuck like, you keep McCoon. Turning them off, but suckers, you don't know about my secret switch. <laughs> Right, so <laughs> Alfred was just like, mm-hmm, this is mine, on, party oh, on, be a drop bitches. Down disco ball. <laughs> I really want that. <laughs> drop the down disco ball, early obviously. nineteen hundred. There were roller skates and afros. Come on, ball. Carrie. <laughs> oh, man. So That's I, a lot of different time periods. You I had a student out. who like had... A party. A song that he made up called Duck on a Disco Ball. And it just makes me think of him. He was something special. And that's all I can say about him. 
But he had a song called Duck on a Disco Ball, and that makes me think of him. So, Bummer kind of had his son come up with him and told him a calm man in a black cape appeared, watched him, then Did disappeared. Did you say McCartney or McCarthy? Apparently, Alf McCarthy. Oh, okay, just checking. Talking the. Beatles here, or? It's, no, uh-huh. it's. Alfred okay, McCune I was just making sure I knew it was McCune and Paul McCarthy. Making sure for Paul it was McCarthy and Ma- not McCartney cuz otherwise my McCarthyism comment earlier made McCarthy. no sense. McCarthy. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. McCarthy. Um the son mm-hmm. of Phil McCarthy said that a man in a black cape appeared, watched him then disappeared. Apparently non-malicious, just totally platonic. Um, just likes to keep his eye out on things in the house. So he just, you know, wants to make sure the party's going good. But there is another prominent ghost here. It's the spirit of a girl who is approximately 10 years old, whose portrait hangs in the house, which I never read anything about the, uh, the McCoons having any children, but it... I don't know. It leads us to the assumption that she wants to live there since her portrait hangs there. I don't know if that's I just me, think but so. I mean, like now, I don't we'll know. Have, that's just like, weird to me. Cool old pictures of randos just chilling sometimes, and we're like, it's art. <laughs> I love but, like, back old then. pictures of randos. That's like my aesthetic. Like the that's why your house rando, is haunted, Catherine. The back then, I, like I feel it. like if you had a picture of someone anyway, in your house, they were yeah. had lived there at some point and or were related in some way. They're not like us. <laughs> right. Okay. So her portrait hung in the house. And because her description tired. is really creepy to me. So she's seen in a gown. Right. So 10 years old-ish. Um, but she's seen in a gown walking in and out of the mirror that hung she's bloody Mary on the west shit. wall of the first floor. So that's that. Well, that's that grand ballroom. That grand mirror that I spoke of before. Not grand ballroom. I'm sorry. But the mirror, that German mirror that I spoke of before. That's that mirror that she Mirrors allegedly walks in and out of. Mirrors are portals. Spooky. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Mirrors are 100% portals. It's weird. However, to make things worse, her footprints have been seen in several rooms, but they start and That's end the in the middle of the room. The ring. So there's no footprints it's going the toward the edges of the room. It's My all in the middle is. of the room. It's always the creepy blue gray children. However, I will make it better for you. Oh my god, you just she scared the shit out, out of me. Time. She You said loves... she's here and I <laughs> I'm like, bitch, <laughs> don't fuck with me right now. I don't do <laughs> dead she is children. here with me. <laughs> so in current times, the house is used for weddings, anniversaries, celebrations, board meetings, and retreats. Well, this little 10-year-old loves her a good wedding, and she will show herself Aww. in pictures. She's seen dancing with the guests. She's seen laughing. She will sometimes show up in photos. I don't know if I want to have my wedding here. Yes. She is mischievous and I know, like, on the one hand, yes, because, oh, yeah, I would 100% but also dead fucking children. Oh, but oh, she but just she's wants a good time. She likes the wedding. Okay? But to be she's fair, celebrating you. to be fair, she's mischievous and will reorganize some items set out for a wedding the following day. So, if, you know, you set out some chargers and whatnot. Ahead, she boo-boo. might rearrange them the way she wants I don't them. Do it. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah. And then she's 10. That's what yeah. they do. But she will uh, include some organ music resonating from the mansion when no one was there. And she's been accredited to some disembodied voices when no one was living there. Because as mentioned, it was the music school and the dance school and whatever else Brigham Young wanted it to be. But yeah, so when no one was there, there were some, you know, disembodied voices and it's fine. And they have discovered some doors will open and close on their own, and they will even lock themselves or unlock themselves on their own, whether or not they have a locking mechanism. So nice. Yeah. So I would 
probably be pretty freaked out if there was a door that did not have a locking mechanism that was locked. And uh, especially if it was yeah, a fucking creepy that, dead uh, child that, that did it. Okay. Not only the ballroom where Alfred is seen, but cold spots have been felt throughout the mansion and lights have been seen to turn off and on as they please. So there nice. is the McCoon mansion. Yes. So I want to go there and just witness what's been going on because I have a feeling that's a pretty haunted spot. There's some others that we will cover at a later date because there is a lot to be said for what's going to happen at a later date. Oh, well, so my husband is worried about me because um, he's a good husband. He is Let's a good talk husband. about the son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> who was not a good husband. Who, when his wife had a fever, he probably didn't even care because he is crazy. <laughs> and that's where we'll start our story. So, this is a really well-known case. There's quite a few well-known cases. This is actually coming out of a suburb of Salt Lake City um, called West Valley City, which is just um, a suburb right outside of Salt Lake. And this is technically considered a missing person case. And then separately is considered a double homicide suicide. And then separately a suicide. So there are technically three cases involved with this. Okay. It's very dark. Um, And like I said, it's really well known. Um, And there's so many true crime cases. I could have really choosed any of them, but I went with this one. So, Susan Marie Cox, um, married name Powell, was born in October of 1981. She's only 11 years older than I would be today. Um, And she has been missing since September, uh, December 6th. 2009 and when I actually picked and researched this case it was like almost exactly to the day that she'd been missing um, which was kind of eerie and that's why I decided to do this case because I like looked into it almost exactly on the anniversary of her going to like going missing Um, thank you and even though it's pretty well known that she is deceased I still think it's important, and she's still technically missing. Um, So her husband, Joshua Powell, is our true crime person. He is our criminal in this case, for sure. Whether or not he had anything to do with her disappearance, we hate him for a number of reasons. Um, So she was born in New Mexico and disappeared in Utah, She's technically, as of recording, missing for 11 years and 16 days. Um, It's believed that she's murdered by Joshua Powell. And she had two kids, Charles and Brayden, and we're going to talk about them as well. So, Joshua Powell was born in 1976 in Washington, Um, His parents had a really dysfunctional marriage. Um, They are LDS, so they are a Mormon family. And uh, Joshua's father did not agree with the teachings of the church. Um, And so he... Do you know what it's specifically about? No, not exactly. I mean, he didn't leave the church, but he was, like, really, really into very, like, violent child pornography and things. So, well, that, I think he would have been a... Yeah, that... Uh, yeah, I think not not part of the Mormon church, no. uh, not part of any church. So, I think no. that was his issue. Um, so, dad started showing him pornography at a very young age. Um, he didn't really have a shot... Um, especially because it was like super violent pornography. So um, he had two other boy siblings and he refused to teach or enforce limits on their behavior as according to the church, but also just like limits on behaviors that you should give children in general. Um, So Josh killed his gerbils that belonged to his sisters and threatened his mother with a butcher knife (laughs) Um, yeah, and that's also had up. Some, oh no, yes. motherfucker! And Dad was like, "He's a boy. Ugh. This is how boys are supposed to." That's be. not how boys should behave. Yeah, 
so it's really bad. Um, so his parents got divorced, um, which is a big thing in the church. But mom obviously knew something was wrong with dad. Yeah. And so Josh um, was old enough during this time that he was a student at the University of Washington. Um he dated around um, people that he met at the church. So, like, people tend to be pretty involved in the LDS church. So, he yeah. met a woman and he dated her. Um, but he was abusive almost immediately. She said, like, I wasn't allowed to go visit my family without him. Couldn't go by myself. Um, she literally went to go visit a friend in Utah without Josh. And decided not to return to Seattle and just told him she was never coming back. That's how good on her. Was. Yeah, so she got out of this, um, and then he still went to LDS church, um, and he met Susan. Um, so they met at a religion course during a dinner party um, in November of two thousand. And they began a relationship and got married in Portland, Oregon, at the LDS Temple there in 2001. So Josh had a bachelor's degree, um, and Susan was a trained cosmetologist, but she worked for a bank after they moved to Utah. Um, So they're both working in businesses. They ended up having two sons, Charles, who is born in 2005, and Brayden, who was born in 2007. Okay, so yeah, normal family, two little boys. Um, so Josh and Susan lived with Marcus. his father for a little while um, in Washington after they got married, which is really important because Susan didn't know that her father-in-law was nuts, okay? Um, but Stephen, the father-in-law, started an mm. obsessive infatuation with her. And living together, he would, like, Mm. follow her around with a camcorder. He used a mirror to spy on her in the bathroom. She stole, he stole her underwear, read her journals, posted love songs under a pseudonym, all about his daughter-in-law, okay? Steven, uh, yeah, like, rigged mirrors in the shower for his daughter-in-law. Um... So he eventually confessed that he was in love. And Susan was like, what the hell, right? So she's like, no. Um, And he had been recording this, so she had, like, proof that Mm -hmm. he was creepy stalking her. So Susan and Josh moved out um, so that Susan could be away from her father-in-law. Um and she's obviously very concerned about this. And in her journal, she talks about how their marriage was falling apart. Josh refused to attend church services. Um, and he continued to be in contact with his father, even though his father was, like, extra creepy towards his wife, right? So Susan did not like that. She's like, your father is creepy. You need to stop talking to him. And josh pretended like nothing was wrong um so josh gets extremely controlling towards his wife um he spent all of their money he had a ton of debts and um he would like attack their houses and things um and do like major property damage yeah so like he would like punch holes in walls wait like, what? he would punch holes in things and destroy like furniture the house is... and things like that. Oh, okay, and so okay. they were over $200,000 in debt. Like attack attack? And she has recordings of this. Um, and she wrote a secret Oof, will that what? included, the I want it documented that there is extreme turmoil in our marriage. And if I die, it may not be an accident, even if I look like one. So she feared for her life. Yeah, she knew her husband went nuts. And Damn. his father was also nuts. And both of them were focused on her for some weird reason. So she knew. And she's just trying to handle her sons, right? Um, so on the morning of December 6th in 2009, Susan and her two boys, oh. Charles and Brayden, went to church. A neighbor visited them, left at around 5. And that was the last time anyone seen Susan. Um, besides her, quote, husband, um, so 
the whole Powell family was reported missing on December 7th, which is the next day by relatives. Um, so Josh's mom and sister went out looking for them at the house um, once they were informed that the children had not been dropped off at daycare. So his mom and his sister are normal and concerned average people. Dad and Josh, the son, are not. Okay. So they called when the kids weren't dropped off at daycare. They were really worried. They called the police um, and had the police break into the house um, because they were worried carbon monoxide or something might have gotten the whole family, right? Police went in. They didn't find anything, but there were two fans blowing on a wet spot on the couch, um, like box fans that were set up to dry off a wet spot on the couch, Susan didn't show up to her job. Her mm-hmm. purse, wallet, identification were all found at the house. Her cell phone was later found in the um, minivan that they had that Josh had been using. Okay? So, Josh returned home much later in the evening with the two little boys, and the police were immediately like, come with us, bro. Um, well, he claimed that he had left sl- Susan sleeping <laughs> at home. Because it's always um, the right spouse. after midnight. And he had taken the boys on a camping trip. Yeah. He's like, oh, I just had the urge, just the manly urge to go camping. Oh, I've heard about my this one. Seven year old and five year old motherfucker. Um, mm-hmm. So he said he oh, took yeah, them to the camping trip. Um, the police visited, yep. found no yep. evidence of a campsite. Um, they found it suspicious that he would take his two young boys out camping after midnight when he was scheduled to go into work on Monday. Um, Josh hadn't told his boss he wouldn't be coming in and he told the police he just thought it was he thought it was the wrong day silly him must have slipped his mind um yeah this is the criminal mastermind at work yeah he's an idiot so um they searched the home they found oh, traces silly of him. Blood it's not floor. like, like I would know it's Sunday versus Monday for 1.5 million um, and also they found the handwritten letter from Susan expressing fear for her life. So homegirl knew shenanigans were afoot, and she did what she needed to. Um, they found DNA in 2003. One matched to her. One was just considered an unknown male contributor. Um, in 2012, the police released documents showing that Josh took actions that were highly suspicious. Um so he liquidated her retirement accounts, canceled her <laughs> regularly scheduled oh, chiropractic sessions, and withdrew his children from daycare the morning she went missing. Um, he also had previously spoken to coworkers about how he would hide a body in a mine shaft in the western Utah desert because no one would ever find it. Um, so police interviewed the couples. El- oh, he's so stupid. I hate him. Um, so the Unless police you talked fucking to the make son, it known, Charles, you dumbass. Um, and he said, <laughs> yeah, we did go camping, but he said that his mom had gone with them and that she didn't come home with them. So weeks after the disappearance, a teacher reported that Charlie, who's seven, had claimed that his mother was dead. Furthermore, Susan's parents, Chuck and Judy, claimed that while at daycare several months after the disappearance, Braden drew a picture of a van with three people in it and told his teachers that mommy was in the trunk. Um, and so the investigators told the media oh. that they planned to question Josh again. They subpoenaed everything that was aired That's in the van of Josh. Up. Um, sorry. Oh my gosh. He okay. got an attorney so to help with the investigation. Okay. So he got in- extremely uncooperative, said that he wasn't going to talk to anyone. Um, And he kind of disappeared after he lawyered up. He went to visit his dad with the boys. And then he visited his brother, Michael, to pack up the family belongings and was intending to move in permanently with his father, who we know is a creep and crazy, right? So he's moving out of state with his two little boys to his crazy dad's house with his brother, who we will also find out is not great. So um, he lived there with the sons and his brothers, and one sister did live there. Yeah. And he said that he would rent out a house. Um, he would rent a house for them, and 
he does, but he still stays living there. Like he just rents it to say that he has another place, but he doesn't leave his dad. Um, there was a bunch of websites, one being SusanPowell.org, that defended Josh, saying that Josh, that Susan's right. family was blaming him and that he didn't do it, and that the LDS church was out to get him, and that's why he was being blamed for this. So his Humble dad was and him blamed because he was literally a fucking ran this idiot. website and said practically that the admitted LDS was to just it. out to get him. Yeah. Um, like, but everyone is pretty sure that it was him. In 2010, they claim that Susan had a mental illness and she left with another man, and that's why she's gone. And it had nothing to do with anything else. Uh, then why was mommy in the trunk? Yeah. So, Stephen, um, so <laughs> Joshua's dad, Stephen, became under scrutiny when someone was like, Well, you know that the father in law is obsessed with her, too. You know that, right? And the police are like, What? And so the police interviewed the father in law, too. Um, and they found computer images. Uh, um, of over 4,500 images taken of Susan without her knowledge, including close-ups of specific body parts on the father-in-law's computer. Okay? Um, yeah, and then they looked into the Michael, fuck? the brother, because he had sold his car to a wrecking yard right after That's Susan disappeared. Up. And later order satellite images of the lot. When police found the car, a sniffer dog indicated that a decomposing human body had been in the trunk, but the DNA tests were inconclusive. So brother, yeah, so the brother had decomposing body in his car. Michael is sus. Right out to a lot and then pulled satellite images to make sure you can find it. Yeah, a little bit Father-in-law sus. Father-in-law has almost 5,000 <gasps> close-up pictures of his daughter-in-law. Okay, like the police are like, I don't even know where to look. Every person in this family is terrible. Um, so they found a possible grave site in the Topaz Mountain <laughs> um, near where Josh liked to camp. There were soil disturbances and shoveling, but they couldn't find any remains. Um, a bunch of anthropologists and forensics were on the site. They used sniffer dogs. Essentially, the police did everything they could, and they have yet to find a body, even though they did find evidence of decomposition in the trunk of a car. Um, so Susan's family are like, this family is crazy. We need to get our grandkids away from him. And so the grandparents on the mother's side um, insist upon a raid mm-hmm. in the home. And basically they find that it's not safe for the two little boys to be with their dad and their grandfather on their dad's side. Okay. Um, Steven was arrested of voyeurism and child pornography. He had secretly videotaped numerous women and young girls, including Susan. Um, so basically found child pornography, grandpa's in jail. They looked at the computer of Josh, the husband, and they found child pornography as yeah. well, but it was drawn and so technically it's not illegal because uh-huh. um, there weren't any actual children involved. It was just a drawing of it. And he claimed that someone else gave him the computer and it was on there. Okay. So Josh's sister finally came forward and is like, he totally did uh- it. Okay. They were both really concerned about him. They had obviously grown up with him and they knew. So Joshua underwent court evaluations. Um, and basically, like, they found him to not be competent, but they couldn't really pin anything on him because he was skirting around what was legal and what was illegal. Um, and so they couldn't charge him with her murder, right? Um, so the most that they could do was go ahead and um, take the children away from him, okay? Um, yeah, well... He was also running a smear campaign saying well, that that's good, at least, though, Susan's that parents the are abusing away. the boys. Um, but all the lawyers and the police knew that there was nothing going on. The grandparents were trying their best. So um, a social worker took the two little boys, Charlie and Brayden, to visit their father because they were living with their mother's parents on February 5th, 2012. Um, so she brought the kids mm-hmm. to visit their father. 
Their father grabbed the kids, pushed her down, and ran into the house. So she called 911 immediately. Um, he wouldn't let her in, and he set off mm-hmm. a bomb that made the house explode, killing himself and the two little boys. Yeah. So it was considered a murder, a double murder suicide. Yeah, I forgot. Um, about saying that. that the bomb was what deliberate. And um, basically, when they, ex- not to go into too much detail, um, he used a hatchet to chop up the little boys before the bomb went off. Um, so he did not want those little boys to get out of there alive. Um, Michael, his brother, was the main beneficiary. Oh and um, he later committed suicide. Um, he jumped from the roof of a parking garage. Um, so father of the father is still in jail for child pornography. Brother jumped off the roof of a parking garage, presumably for his involvement mm-hmm. in the murder. And then the husband hacked up his little boys and then blew himself and the little boys up. Okay. Susan's still missing, um, but obviously presumed yeah. dead at this point. Um, so there is a Crime Junkie podcast that covers it. It's a, it's a very yeah. young case. Like, this all happened when uh-huh. we were in high school and college, mostly college. Um, so even though Susan is very clearly a victim, we also have two little boys who are very clearly victims um, but Susan technically isn't legally declared dead yet, yep. but we know both her little boys are dead. And the maternal grandparents buried the little boys in a memorial with their mother, and they cremated dad, and no one cares where he is. So, um, yeah. So it seems like... <laughs> Dad abused his sons. These sons, the two brothers, Michael and Joshua, like, Josh killed Susan. Josh planned on killing her, whatever. Michael helped dispose of the body. And then when Josh knew he was going to be caught, he killed himself and his sons. And then Michael killed himself shortly after when they knew he was going to get caught. Um... So, we don't technically know what happened besides what happened yeah. in the aftermath. We don't know how Susan was killed. We don't know where her body is. Um, but it's pretty clear that she did not make it home from that camping trip. That was all just a ruse to kill her. So, we hate them. It's been a while since I've been this disgusted yeah. by people in a case, if you want me to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, this is a case that I've been introduced to time and time again. And I... I... Oh, my goodness. I can't even begin yeah, to describe it's, it's my It's sad and it's bad with everything leading up to and the disappearance of the mother but like the yeah, aftermath with the little worker. boys and everything she, like, like he planned that out and then took them from the social to worker and, boys, and you know and you oh, don't think yeah yeah right because not yeah. only is it and you know she's had to live with that yeah. right is it not only the terrible case of the disappearance of the mom but it's a mom. Yeah, it's um. So therefore, mm-hmm. it's the ripple effect like, of the kid. And it's hard to find it's so just, many people. And like technically, it could have been Michael who killed Susan. It could have been Josh who killed Susan. It could have been his dad who killed Susan, Stephen. Like literally, all three of them are so fishy. And like Michael, mm-hmm. I would like to yeah. think he just helped his brother out by driving the getaway car. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because obviously he was mentally ill or feeling an extreme amount of guilt for something because he did commit suicide. But the dad is literally in jail and does not care. He shows no remorse and he is a creepy ass motherfucker. And then the husband who like, if he didn't, he literally just wanted to take his kids away. 
from his right. grandparents on his mother's side. Like, the people who were raising them and trying to give them some normal life because yep. their mother yep. was never coming home. And they were young, but old okay. enough to know what happened, but young enough to not know how to handle it. And that's the worst part. So, yep. I don't know. I was really horrified him because it is December. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was, it was fairly recently, like when I discovered this case, it was almost exactly 11 years from when she disappeared. And uh, her family is all gone now, and we don't know what happened to her, and that just makes me really sad. So, it's a real, mm. real downer, I have to say. It's one of my worst I've done in a long time, especially because it's so recent. Like, these people are, like, uh-huh. tangible people who should be alive right now it's not like with jack the ripper even though that's sad those women were killed so long ago you know these little boys should be on winter break right now yeah yeah well yes. i'm so we sorry to you not the pretty mountains but the downer. dark side of but you know Salt what City. this is the dark side tour guides the and, rain uh, shadow if you will <laughs> we hope you enjoyed the dark side of the mountains <laughs> and uh the rain's shadow moon shadow moon, moon shadow. shadow if you will because this you're is... welcome i'm here for the cat stevens any day thank you brie <laughs> yes moon. this is the dark side <laughs> of the new moon enter the new year so, like carrie and be enjoy drunk. your new year <laughs> it is not 2020 we are now <laughs> As I like right. have Goodbye, the everyone. 20, 21. <laughs> Enjoy your new year. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Goodbye. Follow us on Instagram at Dark Side Tour Guides and on Twitter at Dark Side Guides. Give us a like on Facebook at Dark Side Tour Guides. Visit the blog at darksidetourguide.wordpress.com or email us at darksidetourguides at gmail.com.